Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a grammar school. How to transform nails that grow upward? There are two nail tech types. Some say that a new extension is the only option here, while others claim that a nail correction will do. There is no need to choose. Today we will do both and compare the results. There will be a total transformation, so let's get into it. Here are today's nails. They are naturally upgrowing. And their condition was worsened by overfiled sidewalls, layering in the ingrowth points. And overall, these nails look weird. I guess the tech was trying to narrow them using a wrong filing technique. I asked my model for more details, and she said that it was a beginner nail tech. And according to her words, that girl was practicing on her nails. It was for free, so my model could not object in any way and ended up with these nails. And answering my question on how she managed to keep them, she said that she didn't even breathe on them. Well, she basically tried not to do anything to quirk you with them, that's it. That is really surprising, because normally nails with such gaps in the ingrowth points break super fast but she managed to avoid it. So, I removed the old coverage first. There was a camouflage base coat with such golden metallic elements. And during the removal, they may easily hurt one's eyes. So make sure to wear some protection working with such materials. Protection glasses or a protective screen. To avoid injuries. Once when I was removing acrylics with an e-file, one piece of it got into my eye, and it was really painful. If it happens, make sure to rinse your eyes immediately. Consult an ophthalmologist if the pain goes on. It may happen to anyone, so again, make sure to wear some protection. On this hand, I will do an extension, so I remove the free edge with clippers and polish the surface. And here, I just slightly file the nails, I will shape them afterwards. I recommend you shape almonds on upgrowing nails. This way we can conceal the growth pattern. Moving on to the manicure. My model is young, so her hands are sweating. I will use some talcum powder to prevent the drill bit from getting clogged. To lift up the cuticle and clean up the pterygium, I'm using a red flame drill bit, 0.21 in diameter. It is perfect for such soft and sensitive cuticles. Blue drill bits may easily cut the cuticle and the sinus zone. The skin won't get smooth. To see the cuticle pocket better, I form a so-called cuticle rim. Work in the reverse position, moving from right to left to lift it up. This way you will see how clean the manicure is under the cuticle and avoid pooling. I will cut the cuticle after sculpting. Since the nail plate is sweating, I apply some dehydrator to dry it out a bit. And then a primer for better bonding. I will be using this camouflage rubber base coat as an underlay. It provides perfect bonding. I apply a thin layer and send the nail secure into the lamp. I do one nail at a time to avoid pooling. Let's get the forms ready. I remove the inner part and make a medium cutout. A deeper cutout works the best for a square shape. And for an almond shape, we will need a flatter one. Our task is to make sure that there is no gap between the nail and the form. I will set up the form straight. There is no point to tilt it down since, otherwise, eventually, hands will look different. 
and we need to keep balance here and make sure that hands look the same. It will not change the growth pattern that much, but at least the model's hands will look alike. I will use Aquagel for sculpting, which is one of my favorite materials for fixing such gaps by building them up without using forms. So on this hand I squeeze out a pretty big drop and in the cuticle zone I spread it up to the lunula. I do not cover it up yet. I want to keep it as natural as possible and then I will build it up with a base coat. I'm using a natural brush and some aligning liquid to smooth it out. I form the apex and a smooth descent to the free edge. Don't worry if the material is sagging a bit like this. It is totally fine since we are forming missing sidewalls. Now on the other hand, I will do an extension. So I stick the form and squeeze it into a sharp triangle to form an almond shape. I'm using Aquagel to form the underlay right away. By the way, this color matches my model's natural nail color perfectly. It is cover pink. I compare the length and with the first drop, I form the underlay. The free edge thickness should be about 1 mm, now cured in the lamp. I'm using a conveyor technique, so I do strengthening on one hand and then sculpting on the other one in turns. Continue strengthening. And here you can see how I build up the mess in parallel. Make sure to pop all the tiny bubbles on the surface if there are any. Use a brush or an orange stick for this purpose. Unless you plan to cover up the nails with gel polish, then there is no need to remove the bubbles. Our today's design presupposes some further coverage. Now I put a drop in the cuticle zone to continue the extension and build up the architecture by the same principle. Once you have applied the drop, make sure to keep it on the apex instead of pulling it down to the free edge. Otherwise, the nails will look upgrowing. Use such a long, wide brush to even out the surface. I love using such brushes for sculpting. As usual, I'm using a measuring tool to compare the length. I do trust my eyes, but in order not to skip a millimeter, I measure it. Make sure to remove the excess material if there is any. Press the material well in the cuticle zone. Otherwise, if there are any gaps left, the material will peel off. It is one of the most common mistakes that we make working with polygels. That's it for the layout. Moving on to filing. I touch up the surface and check the lower parallels. Given that these nails are upgrowing, the parallels will look a bit different. I lift them up like this closer to the free edge. In case there are bubbles on the polygel surface, degrease it. I prefer to use an orange stick to pick them open and remove the excess dust. Then I put some acrogel there, patch up the holes and send the nails to cure into the lamp. Next, file the surface and 
As you can see, it is smooth and even now. Now I cut the cuticle with scissors. I'm using tweezer scissors. I saved the cuticle cut for last so as not to ruin it while in the surface. Beginners may easily cut the cuticle doing a perfect manicure in advance. So, in nail sculpting, we can do a manicure either before or afterwards, given the situation and the technique you're going to use. In the no filing technique, do a manicure right away. And vice versa. Normally, I cut the cuticle right away because I've got enough filing practice. But for the sake of the video, I'm using a beginner-friendly technique. Now we can touch up any flaws with a diamond drill bit. I turn the hand over, the one with nail strengthening, and file out the natural nail and the extra thickness on the free edge. Using a thin green carpet drill bit. It perfectly cleans up the nails on the inside. And here is a life hack for an extremely natural look. Build up the cuticle zone with a clear base coat. I cover up the nail surface and then put a drop closer to the cuticle. Even it out. And as you can see, there is almost no base coat in the center. And the nails look really natural. Speaking of other pluses of this technique, Acrogel won't pull, which is a common issue. There will be no liftings and, again, a super soft and natural look. Moving on to the design. We will need some pink gel polishes and a thick white shade. I mix some pink and white together to get the shade I want and paint such a whimsical French design, which is one of the current trends. Make sure to use a thin, long brush to paint even lines. One more secret tip for you. Try to paint the line as you breathe out. Then your hand won't shake that much, so the lines will be perfect. Make sure to check out my videos on French manicure to learn how to paint it correctly. Now I cover up the nails with a medium top coat layer to smooth out the surface and to conceal the bumps from the French lines. We decided to use a glossy top coat, but a matte one would work out here too. And what do you think? So here is the final look. Share in the comments below what you would do here. An extension or a correction. Check out my other videos on fixing up growing nails and I wish you all success in your work. Good luck. Bye-bye.